In my last 640x480 VGA video, I loaded a full screen image off my SD card just to kind of see what kind of output I could get as far as static image. And that looked pretty good. So my comment in that video was I probably next need to look at some moving content. And that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my system on and kind of talk while this is running. I typically struggle trying to capture screen output and I've tried these videos in the past with previous video cards and the quality just never quite comes through very well. But doing my best here and, and I'm recording with three different well oh, three different ways here. I have OBS recording through video capture on my computer, and that's probably the worst capture as far as moving content, but maybe it'll help you see some of the colors or something like that on this little sprite that I have moving across the screen. It's a 32 by 32 pixel, uh, two byte color, uh, this little spaceship sprite there. The other recording that I'm using is my iPhone, and I'm just using the standard 4K video recording on that. And it usually does okay, but nothing too spectacular when it comes to the screens. And then I'm also trying my GoPro, and I have that set to 240 frames per second. And that is my, I guess my third option here. And typically for these screens, it comes through a bit dark, but Maybe between the three of these, you can get an idea of what I'm seeing on the, uh, the output here. And I'll, I'll describe it from my perspective here shortly, too. But real quick, looking at my system, you know, I've turned it on and all the normal post tests, and I'm seeing my uh, temperature and time over here. And over here on my video card, I can see I've got some, some stuff going on. And uh, really what I'm looking at there is uh, the last four bits, as a reminder, is which of my... 64K, 64k segments on my video card memory am I currently working in and then this little LED the fifth one that's flashing is just showing which frame is active and you can see that's bouncing back and forth really quickly uh, and then this far left one is showing that I've written something to memory on the video card and I've asked it to swap frames but it's waiting until it gets to vsync to do that and you can see that that is pretty much, you know, it looks like it's pretty much staying lit, but it's obviously moving just very quickly. And so that's uh, kind of interesting to watch that just to see that, yep, I'm waiting for VSync quite a bit, and I'm constantly flipping frames. And then you can see that I'm pretty much sticking within uh, a segment for a while, and I'll show you the code that's actually generating this output. Now, maybe if I describe what I'm seeing on the screen as I look at it, it is super smooth. I've built some video cards in the past. I've used the same spaceship, but an 8-bit version, not a 16-bit version, on my 65816 computer. And that video card, uh, I didn't have multiple frames. It was a single frame. I was using dual port memory, so I was kind of writing and reading to it simultaneously. Uh, and that was with the 65816 driving everything. Here I have the 286 driving everything. And it is the best I've seen any of my video cards look, as far as the movement is concerned. I still have a lot of noise on the screen, and the cameras will pick that noise up differently. Uh, but uh, I think that will go away, hopefully, when I get the PCB version of this in uh, sometime here, maybe in the next uh, couple of weeks. Now, let me show you the code here. And I'm going to zoom into this code just a little bit. And I'll start out at the top of my code, which is actually what picks up when I initialize the system or turn on the system. Uh, I'll get into this uh, text section and have my top. And I do a bunch of stuff. I initialize the VGA, and currently I'm initializing both frames to black, so it just loads them up as black when I turn it on. Uh, but one of the things after all this other code is I get down to this here called a ship loop. And let me expand ship loop here and show you that. Uh, the first thing I do in this is I read the VGA register. So I, I go out to the VGA circuit, I read the register, which is what these LEDs are showing as the current values in the register, minus the first LED. That's more of a, a comparator that's showing me if I've got uh, a change that hasn't been actually flipped due to the VSync. Uh, but all the other LEDs are the register values. 
So I read in the register and I basically ignore the last four bits and then I put in a value here of four. And basically what I'm telling it to do is to go down to the fifth 64K segment of my video memory on the frame that it's on. So whatever frame I'm currently from the 286 using, jump down to the fifth frame. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is my fifth frame. And that's where I want to start drawing. And that's where the ship comes out when, when it's at the highest. And you'll see that I drop it down 32 pixels at a time down here through basically reading in that register and incrementing which segment I want to work on. So I'm just incrementing through the segments. Um, I'm also filling in the B register with a value which is going to tell me how many pixels at a time I want the ship to move. Uh, and I should should say that the number two here is actually two bytes, which means one pixel. So first I want the sprite to move one pixel at a time across that 64K segment. And then I'm going to play a sound, and I've disconnected the speaker for the recording just so it's not constantly beeping at me. But then it'll beep, uh, give me my, my sound, then it's going to jump to the next register, which means drop down 32 lines, and then basically um, repeat. And, and this time it's going to go for four bytes movement, which is two pixels at a time. Okay, so it comes up, it, it drops down to my fifth 64K segment, it moves one pixel at a time across the entire screen, then it drops down 32 lines, and it moves across the screen two pixels at a time, drops down three pixels at a time, drops down four pixels at a time. And then I just tell it to repeat that whole thing. So go back up to that fifth segment, slow down, drop down, speed up, drop down, speed up, drop down, speed up. Now within this, I then am calling this Draw Sprite. And I'll go down to show you what that Draw Sprite looks like. And so in the Draw Sprite, I'm using some code in uh, one of my uh, fellow uh, YouTubers here that's uh, consistently uh, had some really nice uh, feedback and comments, uh, Demouse, if that's how you pronounce it, um, had commented on, on an older video I had about how to, in x86, copy blocks of memory. And I actually put that into practice here where I'm going to say, okay, I want to copy the sprite data and the sprite data I have actually got stored on my system ROMs. And, you know, it's a small amount of space. I just put it in the system ROMs for now. I could have put it on the SD card. It wouldn't have really mattered. That, that's a, a minor thing. But uh, I put it on the, the, uh, the, sorry, the flash ROMs here. And then I come in here and I say, okay, fill in DSSI with where I'm going to pull from. So that means I've got to say I want to fill in DS with this F000 for my segment, which really means it's the F F0000, uh, very top of my ROM space. And uh, then within that, find sprite ship. Well, I can go way down to the bottom here. And I, in my ROM data, have this sprite ship. And I'll zoom out just for a second temporarily. And if you squint really hard, you can maybe see that ship that's flying across the screen. So it's kind of like uh, reading the matrix here. So lots of zeros are all blacks, blacks, blacks. But then eventually I get to, you know, something here where I start to see something that's making up this ship. Uh, I can kind of see the three pieces of it and, and the little two tail pieces. So that, that's making up the ship. And I did also put in... And actually, as I move the, the mouse, this highlighting this way, you can kind of see it pop out a little bit more, too. As I highlight all the zeros, you can see the what's not highlighted is the ship there. So uh, I did also put in, though, eight pixels of black. And that's so that as I move the ship to the right, this, this trailing black is going to... Um, so if I said move this, for example, four pixels to the right, this trailing black makes sure that it erases the old ship as I'm drawing the new stuff to the right. Uh, it's just a way for me to quickly, uh, without having to put in code, to go out and undo the far left columns or erase left columns. Uh, it just draws over them with this little buffer I put in. But that's my sprite. So it's a 32 tall, 40 wide. The ship is actually 32 by 32 or fits within 32 by 32. And then I put in that extra eight columns of black. And if I scroll back up then, uh, as I look at this, then essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to say go down to 
uh, that ROM space, and I want you to copy you know, a word at a time and copy the first row of the sprite image. So uh, go to the, the highest row of data for the sprite, copy it out to the video card, and then drop down a row, copy it, drop down a row, copy it, and I get my 32 vertical rows of my sprite drawn. And once I'm done with that, then I swap frames. So I make the other frame the one I'm going to control from the 286, and the frame I was just writing all the, the sprite data to is now going to get sent out to the VGA signal, uh, VGA monitor. And then I move the whole sprite over, however many pixels are in BX, and remember that um, is actually how many bytes. So if I said go two here, that's going to go two bytes or one pixel. But then I basically say go four bytes, and I work my way up six and eight. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and four pixels uh, as I as I basically am, am getting into this. But for the first time I get into this, this would have been set to two, which means one pixel at a time is what I want the ship to move to the right. And then I basically repeat the whole draw the ship, move it over a pixel, draw it, move over a pixel, draw it. And I'm swapping frames in between every time I draw um, the ship. And then once it gets far enough to the right that I've reached memory location 1320, uh, which would be what, 660 um, in you know columns or pixels. So once it gets to 660, which is you know off the screen, uh, then go ahead and um, get out of this. If I haven't reached that, do the whole loop again. And then once I do get out, I go back up here. I drop down 32 lines, I change my increment from 2 to 4, meaning 2 pixels at a time, repeat, and then I do the whole thing with 3 pixels, 4 pixels, and then I start all over. And that's what you've been seeing on the screen here as I've been talking. Um, so maybe I'm sure there's things that can be much more elegant here, but for a, a, an initial test just to get some moving content, you know, really the 286 is doing all the movement of things. And then I'm just toggling very quickly between those two frames. You, you can see I'm consistently waiting for V-Sync, and, and that doesn't seem to, to be an issue. I mean, this is moving, like I said, on the screen. It's really smooth, and I'm liking what I'm seeing. So I'm sure there's lots of optimizations I can make here, but I'm, I'm going to call this a success for definitely meeting my expectation of moving content that looks nice, looks smooth. Um, my only concern right now is as I look at the screen is just all the noise, the waviness, and the vertical lines. And and that's, I think, like I said, all going to disappear when I get the PCB version of this circuit uh, up and running. Uh, that's been my experience in the past with previous cards, too, is once I get them on a PCB, they, they're usually pretty clean. Uh, so that's it for now. I have a lot more VGA coding work to do, but I thought this would be an interesting video just to show my first moving sprite.